Hi, today is part two in a three-part series on accurate handgun shooting. Part one was mainly about stance. Today we're going to talk a little bit about grip, but mostly about sight alignment, sight picture, and then a little about adjusting your sights. Now, sight alignment and sight picture are related, but they're not the same thing. And right now is when someone who knows more about computers but less about guns than I do would show you a really cool computer graphic. No, I just drew a picture of it. Now there's the top of your barrel and your front sight post or blade. And here's a very typical rear sight on a handgun. And sight alignment is where you line those up so that your front sight blade is centered both vertically and horizontally in your rear sight aperture. That's sight alignment. Sight picture is when you superimpose that on the target, so this is what you see when you look down the barrel. Now you may have heard of something called a six o'clock hold, where you get a sight picture that looks like this. That can be very useful for shooting bullseyes like this because finding this sight picture is easier than bisecting the target. The problem is if you've got your sights adjusted so you see this and hit in the center, it only works if you're constantly shooting at targets of the same size at the same distance. When you switch to a different target, you're not going to hit in the center anymore. So what works for me is I adjust my sights to point of aim, point of impact. So I get a sight picture that looks like this and hopefully hit in the center of the target. So let me get a handgun, we'll shoot this target and discuss a little bit about sight adjustment. As I've said before in teaching a novice how to shoot a handgun, you should start with a user-friendly handgun. For me, a great choice is this Ruger Mark III. Its ergonomically designed grip, its big high visibility sights make it, in my opinion, a good choice to teach a novice how to shoot a handgun. Now right now I've got this loaded with Federal American Eagle 40 grain round nose lead bullet. I'm going to go back 15 yards and shoot this target and see what kind of group I get and then we'll see how this gun works for adjusting your sights. So how'd we do? You can see that the group is a little high and maybe a little to the left. And this means either the sights are off or I'm doing something wrong. Well, if it's a shooter-caused problem, that will usually come with a bigger group. Because this is a halfway decent group, we can say it's probably just the sights are off. No problem. We'll adjust the sights. Well, in adjusting the sights, you move the rear sight in the direction that you want the strike of the round to go. In this case, we want it lower. We move the rear sight down. Problem is, this Mark III does not have adjustable sights. There are versions that do, but this isn't one of them. The rear sight is dovetailed in. I can hit it with a mallet and adjust it for windage, but the only way I'm going to make it lower is get out a file and file off the top of that rear sight, thus making it lower. Before I resort to something that drastic, however, let's just try changing the ammunition and see if that affects the strike of the round. What I've got it loaded with now is CCI Mini Mag 36 grain hollow points. So let's put up a new target, go back 15 yards and shoot it, and see if that changes anything. Now let's try a different handgun. This is a Smith & Wesson Model 36 and I've got it loaded with Federal American Eagle 38 Special 158 grain round nose lead bullet. I'll shoot this target from 10 yards and see what kind of group we get. So how'd we do? Not a bad group, but it's a little bit to the left. So we need to move the strike of our round to the right, which means moving our rear sight to the right. Problem is that the sights on this gun are not adjustable at all. The rear sight is a notch cut in the top strap. You're not going to move that. So what can we do? Well, you need to move the rear sight in the direction you want the strike of the rounds to go. Therefore, you have to move the front sight in the opposite direction. We want the strike of our rounds to go to the right. We need to move the front sight to the left. Except the front sight on this isn't adjustable either. The only way I'm going to do that is by filing off one side of the sight, making it narrower, so it de facto moves it to the 
the left. Well, before I do anything that drastic, again, let's change ammo and see if that changes our results. So now we've got a new target, and I'll load with Remington Green and White Box 38 Special Plus P 125 grain semi jacketed hollow point, and again shoot from 10 yards. And so again, we see that changing ammunition can change the strike of the round. And that, for me, is a much better first step than getting out a mallet or a file. Now, there would be those that argue that the best first step would be buying a handgun with adjustable sights, and that's a good point. But a lot of concealed carry types of handguns don't have adjustable sights at all. So what's the takeaway from the whole thing? It would be first, move the rear sight in the direction you want the strike of the round to go move the front sight in the opposite direction of the, where you want the strike of the round to go, buy a gun with adjustable sights if it fits your budget and your needs, and as always, don't try this at home, I'm what you call a professional, and thanks for watching this sight alignment sight picture video.